Hi guys. Um, today's homework is going to be a little bit different than what we normally do. So instead of writing a new set of Cornell notes, I want you to get out your Cornell notes that you took in class on Tuesday about DNA mutations with your teacher. So get those out and get those ready because I'm going to teach you how to annotate them throughout today's homework video. So the first thing we need to talk about is a few ways for you to annotate your notes. And then once we talk about these, um, we'll begin the actual homework video and you will annotate the Cornell notes that you have out. So um, a couple of ways to do this. One, add questions to the left-hand side of your notes. So on the right-hand side, you write all the details. On the left-hand side, you should write big questions or um, topic sentences that kind of cover all the information in one section of your notes. So add in some questions like what is DNA, what is a mutation, things like that. The second thing you should do is underline, circle, or highlight um, any key vocabulary terms. So things like mutation. It's going to be a keyword for our vocabulary today, um, so you'll want to do that. Another thing you could underline or highlight are key concepts. Um, so that's something you'll want to keep in mind. Something I encourage you to do is put a question mark by things you don't understand. Now, that doesn't mean to put a question mark by every single word you don't understand, but maybe a big concept or a key term um, that you know is really important, right? Put a question mark by that. Um, write it in pencil so that you can go back and erase it once you understand what that is, once you've talked to your teacher. All right, the next thing that I would recommend when you are annotating notes is I would write examples. So today we're gonna to talk about mutations. If you hear um, an example that you like or a disease that one of those mutations causes, you might wanna write that example down by that mutation. So be sure to use examples to connect it to real life. Number five, write a summary. At the end of your Cornell notes, you should always be writing summaries. That's taking the information and putting it into your words and kind of wrapping it all up so that you know that you understand the main idea of the notes for that day. A great way to write a summary is to answer your essential question. Um, so if you look at your essential question, try answering it in your summary. And if you can't do that, you'll want to talk to your teacher. The last thing I would recommend doing is adding any pictures or diagrams, especially on today's notes. Um, with mutations, if you see a picture or a diagram that really is a good example of what that thing is, I would add that to your notes as well. So get your notes, get something to write with, maybe a colored pencil or a highlighter, and let's get started. <laughs> no. Hi guys. So you should have your Cornell notes out ready to go that you took on Tuesday in class. And so I am going to build a graphic organizer on the board. This is gonna have exactly the same information that you learned on Tuesday. You're just gonna see it in a different way. And so as I explain and as I build this, I want you to do a couple of things. One, if this graphic organizer that we build is helpful to you, um, go ahead and jot it down on your notes. Copy it down and use it. If it's not exactly helpful to the way your brain functions, I want you to take this information and I want you to annotate your notes. So just how we taught you how to do that with underlining and highlighting and writing questions, um, go ahead and do that on your notes as we go. Um, one thing to start with, okay, the words that you see on the board right here are important key vocabulary terms. So those words, you might want to go ahead now and highlight or underline them or do that as we talk about them, okay? So we're going to start with the main idea. The main idea is in the middle. It's a mutation. We've been talking about DNA mutations. When you hear mutations, you need to think about changes. More specifically, it's changes in our DNA. And so as you saw today, one example, which is kind of sci-fi, but one example you saw today probably was uh, X-Men, Ninja Turtles, Spider-Man. Those are changes in the genetic material of an organism. And sometimes those changes aren't necessarily bad. Most of the time, they're going to result in something negative for the organism. So we've got our mutations, um, and we have a couple of things that cause mutations, right? So in class, you heard that a few things, errors, so mistakes in transcription or DNA replication, either of those two things can cause mutations. So here are two things that we can um, get mutations from. So if you think about it, um, I told my students, it's kind of like a shoe factory, right? If you are making thousands of shoes a day, there's a good chance that at some point one of those shoes is going to get made wrong or incorrectly. It's the exact same thing with our DNA and when we do transcription and make mRNA. 
at some point in time, something's probably going to go wrong with our base pairs and we're going to get a mutation. One other way that our DNA can mutate is by environmental factors. So, environmental factors are things like radiation. UV radiation from sunlight, um, nuclear radiation or power plants, anything like that is strong enough to penetrate into our bodies outside of an organism and to affect the structure of our DNA and cause a mutation. So now we're going to talk about our different categories of mutations. Is it possible? No. Hey. Sorry. So our first category of mutations is called point mutations. So this is the first type of mutations you might see. So when you think of point, think of pointing at something. When you point, you point at one thing. Okay, so point mutations, there are three types. And what we're going to notice about point mutations is that it affects one base in our DNA. So there are three types of point mutations, and they include a silent mutation, missense mutation, and a nonsense mutation. So a silent point mutation, a silent point mutation is when there's a change in the DNA bases, but it results in no change. point mutations. Um, one thing we should also know is sometimes scientists will use or um, teachers will use the word um, substitution. That's the same thing as a point mutation. So whether they use substitution or point, it is the same thing. Some examples of point mutations include sickle cell anemia and color blindness. So here are some examples. So remember, since you're annotating your notes, you're definitely going to want to add this in. All right, so our last category of mutations, okay, is called frame shift. So this is our last type that we're going to talk about. So we again have three types of frame shift mutations. Um, our frame shift include insertion, deletion, and duplication. So insertion. This is when we add one base to our DNA. So one base is added in. Deletion, if you think about what you do on a computer when you hit delete, right, you delete a letter. That's exactly what happens here. We delete a base, so it's minus one base. And the last one is duplication. So if I ask you to duplicate something, you're going to give it to me double, right? So duplicate means times two. So here is when we get double the bases or a codon, a group of three RNA bases or DNA bases are doubled. Um, and so these all are frame shift mutations because what they do is they change every other part of the DNA strand after the mutation. So everything that happens after the, the mutated um, base is different. And so this type of mutation is going to cause a bigger effect on our DNA than a point mutation. Something to keep in mind and to add to your notes if you don't have that already, okay? Um, some examples of these, okay? One example of an insertion dis, um, mutation is called ALS. You might have heard of the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, okay? It stands for Amyotrophic Lateral Sclerosis. Um, and so that is a result of an insertion mutation. Um, another example of our deletion mutation is called cystic fibrosis. 
Cystic fibrosis is the disease that affects um, your lungs and the heart um, and the sinuses, so your breathing passages in your nose and your head, um, and it causes um, a difficulty breathing and things like that. So um, now you have your diagram about your mutations. Make sure you are annotating your notes, and if you have any questions, see your teacher in class.